Well, hi friends, and welcome back to Seven Days to Die. This is a great time to tell you guys about a bug that this game has, where if you log out, well, it is between the hours of 2200 and 4400. So between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. on a horde night, which for us is every night, it will actually respawn the entire horde, which is why we have a zombie horde here that we just finished beating up. So we just need to be careful and fix this back up, make sure that doesn't break. One of these guys should be dying soon. Please get down from there, sir. Do not climb on the furniture. First thing I want to do is get our little home cleaned up because it's just kind of a nasty mess right now. And let's just do that. Well, I think that's an excellent start for right now. We went ahead and got all of the junk cleared out of here. We still have a lot of repairing and upgrading to do. Obviously, this place is far from finished, but we can work on that tonight before the horde and continuously throughout the future. Uh, let's pop down our forge right here. Let's throw down our little fire pit. We're going to put a land claim block right here, which is going to prevent zombies from spawning in the immediate area. For storage, we're going to start with three little storage chests right up here, and I am going to get all of my inventory sorted into these. All right, we are all organized. In this first chest, we have got all of our crafting materials, ammunition, uh, just basically everything is in there with the exception of healing items, food, and water, and seeds. Any sort of plant-based material is also going to go in here, and then our last chest is going to be all the stuff that we are going to sell to the trader. Now, a lot of this stuff is useful. Like the brass, obviously we can use that to make bullet casings, oil, uh, electrical and mechanical parts. But at the start of the game, this is the best way to make money. Uh, unless you're lucky and you find like a treasure map. But yeah, just going around wrenching stuff, selling electrical parts, and plastic and all that good stuff. So that is what we are going to be selling for the time being. But we need to decide what we're going to be doing today. Now what I would like to do is find as much cobblestone as possible. So we can start to reinforce these outer layers around our fort to keep the zombies from, you know, breaking through and eating our face off. Um, but we're just going to kind of be dicking around in the town, picking up as much cobblestone as we can, killing zombies for experience, wrenching whatever we can. So let's just start doing that. I went ahead and crafted us a couple of repair kits using some duct tape and forged iron. So we now have two of those. So once our wrench breaks because we're going to be using it a lot today we'll be able to repair it at least twice which is a good start let's deal with this little guy and i would like to run over to jen's uh at around six o'clock once she opens up and see if she has any closer quests available if she doesn't then we're just not going to do any quests today but it would be nice if she had a nearby buried supplies that we could do and get a little bit of food because we are going to start getting hungry pretty soon I haven't been able to put a point into Master Chef yet to cook the raw meat that we have. And I don't want to waste it by turning it into charred meat. So we're just going to clear out this little trailer right here, see if we can find anything good, and then we'll head over to Jen's and see if she has any nearby quests. find we found a college jacket this is my preferred uh, item that goes in that slot what is that slot called uh, overcoat this is my preferred overcoat it gives you 10 percent increased run speed and some decent resistance to the elements and for anybody who doesn't know street lights like this actually can give you forged steel forged steel is very hard to find in the early game until you get a crucible it is uh oh we have a zombie coming over <laughs> but you can actually nerd pull up to street lights and get, we got three forged steel out of that one, in addition to the electrical parts, so a good find there. Let's deal with this guy real quick. Ooh, 
Jesus Christ, that scared the hell out of me. Oh my god. Fall down, bitch. Oh, 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 oh. we're fine. We're fine. Oh, sneaky boy, dude. I legit jumped in my seat. I think we've got just about enough goodies, but before we head over to Jen's, I want to loot this place right here. It's kind of a, a gas station-y type POI. There's no... it's not a dungeon style, so there's no main loot at the end. And I'm not sure if there's actually any zombies guarding it. If there are, there's very few. But as you can see, there's a lot of cobblestone in here, and we need cobblestone. So let's loot this place up, and then we'll head over to Jen's. Oh, look at that. We got the pipe bomb schematic. That's actually really cool. Let's go ahead and read that. And let's look at what it takes to pimp. <laughs> what it takes to craft a pipe bomb. Uh, plant fibers, gunpowder, and short iron pipes. That is very, very reasonable. The only downside is that it requires a workbench to make those. And we don't have a workbench yet. However, that's still a good find. And we are going to try and use some of those as soon as we can. Ah, there is a zombie here. Right, looks like he is going to be able to get up to us. So why don't we just hop up on a pole, and we should be just fine. You coming? Oh, there's a door in his way. Perfect. Now let's put a block there. Even better. Got a weapons bag. Anything good? A laser sight mod. That is not terrible. You know, we might be able to put that on our blunderbuss. We can. That's going to up its damage just a little bit, which isn't bad. So we've basically looted this whole POI. And something that I like to do, just because I'm a little bit OCD, is once I've looted a place, just put a little X on it. It just makes me happy. So we should have collected quite a lot of junk that we can sell to Jen. And I wanted to get enough stuff so that We'll have a thousand coins so we can buy one of those cigars she has. That's going to be the most important thing to buy from her. So let's grab our stuff from our trader chest. And get all organized and head over to see her. Ooh, Jen's got some sugar butts for sale. We should probably pick those up. Those are going to improve our bartering by 10%. And yeah, that just paid for itself because the cigar is a thousand, so that'll knock it down to 900, and then we'll get more gold or uh, more coin for the items that we're about to sell her. And I picked through some garbage on the way here. We found a book that sells for 110. Uh, this is strictly for PvP servers, so there's literally no reason to read this. Hi, Jen. But you know what? Actually, let's abandon our quest real quick so we can check if there's anything closer. Ooh, we have a clear zombies quest really close and a close buried supplies. Let's do yeah. the buried supplies Thanks, and then we'll come back and grab that fetch quest after. And let's go ahead and sell all of this stuff. All right, 1500 coin for selling all of that stuff. That is perfect. Let's find one of those cigars. 900 can do. And we've got 625 coin on us. Maybe we'll buy one of these beakers. We definitely want to buy something while we have that sugar butt active. Uh, let's go with the grave digger mod. I hope we you can throw that better. in our shovel. And that's just going to make digging a little bit faster. And since we're off to do a buried supplies quest, that is going to be a good decision in my opinion. Uh, cigars, in case you don't know, are really, really strong. Uh, super meta, plus one to strength, which is just huge, especially since we're going for a strength build, and plus 10% to bartering. So between the cigar and the sugar butt candy, we actually get a 20% reduction in cost right now, which is just fantastic. So let's take this fancy stone shovel of ours and go dig up some treasure. So we came across a field of this chrysanthemum, and we went ahead and threw a point from that level we just got into Master Chef, and that's gonna unlock all the basic recipes for us, including the recipe for red tea, which is just gonna allow us to combine our regular water with one of these chrysanthemums, and uh, it's just gonna make our regular water better, give us some nice little buffs that last for a few minutes and make our lives just that much little bit easier. 
Ooh, there's a wolf up ahead. Thank God he didn't aggro. Wolves are very, very scary on this difficulty. Let's try and find some flat ground. Like this. Perfect. Okay, let's try and get a sneak attack. Yes, got him. Alright, he's going to come over. And, you know what? He's actually... He might be too short. Let's go ahead and upgrade this block. He's actually doing a lot more damage than I would like. Come on. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. That's not good. Um, but we're... We're, we're totally fine as long as the zombie doesn't get on top of the wolf. We're going to be just fine. I'm actually going to try and keep my stamina full just in case that happens. The wolf is dead. Okay, we are totally fine. That got a little sketchy there for a second. But we're good. Let's just beat the zombie's head in. Chop up that wolf for the meat and then move on with our day. All right, we have made it to our buried supplies, unfortunately. We've got a zombie biker in the area, so we're just going to have to take him down, and he's, he's a tough dude. He's a tough zombie. So this is going to take a minute, but that's okay. We'll get a little XP for it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I think I'm actually going to use my blunderbuss here. It's noisy, but it will attract any other zombies in the area, which I would like, so that they're not coming up and attacking us while we're digging our hole. There we go. Mr. Zombie Biker is dead. Let's just repair this block. Hop down. We're going to upgrade this lower frame too. And put a frame block right here in case any more zombies bother us while we're digging our hole. We can just hop right up here, pick up the frame block. Easy peasy, good to go. Let's put that back. And we need to start digging. Oh, look at that. We came right down on top of it. That might be the fastest I have ever dug up a buried supplies treasure. Uh, but we, as soon as we interact with this chest, a bunch of zombies are going to show up. So we're actually going to dig this hole a little bit bigger, get some more clay. We're going to dig it down to bedrock and make a little defense tunnel. And just kind of turtle up back there and then fight the zombies off in that choke. So when using this technique, this is pretty much the only way to do buried supply quests on Insane Nightmare at the beginning of the game. It's very important that you take out these blocks right here, because if the zombies are standing above you and you hit them in the legs, you will eventually knock their legs off and they'll become crawlers and they'll crawl into the hole with you and uh, end your playthrough, which is not ideal. Let's go ahead and upgrade this frame. All the and why don't we take out one more? All right, I took out a little bit more clay there. Let's go ahead and search this. We got some food. We got some Grandpa's Moonshine, a recipe we can sell, all excellent stuff. We should have some zombie friends. And if the zombies are beating on the earth, you can actually repair it just by using the clay that you've been digging up. So, ooh, we've got four zombies, including a Mo. That is... More scary shit than I was hoping for. But you know, we're going to be fine. We have our blunderbuss. Let's try and get a good headshot on Mo here. That seemed decent. It's kind of an awkward way to fight, but, you know, it gets the job done. And the blunderbuss does do piercing damage, so it's nice to try and save your shots for when they're kind of lined up in front of each other. Just to get a little bit more value out of your shots, because you only got so many at this point in the game. And these guys should both be getting pretty beat up at this point. Let's just go for a nut shot on Mo there. He just about dead. Let's finish off old Karen here. Oh, come on. Yeah, die. Thank you. Alright, I'm going to dig my way out of here because I want a little bit more clay, as we didn't spend as much time digging as I anticipated. And let's head back over towards Jens. We're actually going to make a stop on the way over to Jens. Uh, you can see that sign right over there. That is a working stiff tools. 
And I'm not going to raid and loot this whole place. Number one, it would be a little sketchy to raid a POI of that size on day two. Uh, but it has a garden department, kind of like a Home Depot. And in that garden department is a bunch of stone and clay and cobblestone and all that kind of good stuff that we need to upgrade our base tonight. So we're just going to raid the little garden department. Then we'll head over to Jen's, turn in this quest, grab another one, and head home for the day. Wake up, fuckers. All right. Let's just deal with them here. Only two. Uh, two is kind of a sketchy amount of zombies because they can't jump on each other's heads. So we're just going to have to manage our stamina here. And hope to God that Aaron Jesus smiles on us. All right, that's good. Let's shoot her while she's down. She's dead. All right, we are safe and clear. Just deal with this boy, and then we have all of the garden department to loot. All right, we just popped some frames down in this doorway to be a little bit safe. And as you can see, we've got a bunch of materials right here. Uh, because it is getting later in the day, I'm probably not going to dig up the, all of this cement. We can come back and do that when we raid this place for good. But I do want this stone. Stone and cobblestone is what I am after today. We got about 400 stone and 140 cobblestone in addition to the rest of the goodies that we got today. That should be enough to do some serious upgrading to our base, making it more than durable enough for tonight's horde. So now we just need to get to Jen's and get home and do that upgrading. Hi, Jen. I knew you had it in you. Oh, ho, 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 Jen, my love, my sweet. 20 Molotov cocktails. This offensively is probably the best reward that you can get in the early game. 20 Molotov Cocktails can kill a lot of zombies. That is fantastic. Thank you, love. Uh, let's go back to jobs. Let's pick up this clear zombies nearby. If you finish two more jobs this and week, see if we have I anything to sell her. Let's get rid of this recipe. Of Grandpa's Moonshine can go. We don't need these military armor parts or plastic. And I want to say that's it. I'm just going to double check her inventory and then we'll head home. Huh, she actually got some more first aid bandages. I could have sworn we bought these already. Uh, let's pick those up. Let's grab one of these beakers for making our chem station later on, just to play it safe. There's a good chance that we'll find one between now and then, but just to play it safe. Let's also take these painkillers. Healing items are actually quite valuable when playing on this difficulty. I've been lucky so far, and I haven't really had to use any healing items yet, but that is not always going to be the case. My luck is going to run out eventually. And do I want these gloves? I just what are we wearing for gloves now? Like. We're wearing fiber gloves? Yeah, why not? They're so cheap. The They're business. so cheap. And we can Let's scrap those there. into military armor parts once we're done wearing them. And then sell those military armor parts. So that's not a bad investment right there. Now let's try and get home without any trouble. Oh, silly me, I haven't actually cooked anything down in our forge that we worked so hard to get going yesterday. So let's go ahead and start cooking down some iron and some clay. First things we're going to make are going to be a cooking pot and a grill so we can start to use our fire here to cook up the raw meat that we have. And let's go ahead and make an iron hatch. Let's upgrade this to iron. We'll be able to upgrade that to a hatch in a second. Let's pull out our cobblestone and start to upgrade all of this layer to cobblestone because that's the layer that the zombies are primarily going to be attacking. And we can upgrade this hatch to iron, and we can reinforce it two more times. So each it has three health bars now, and each one has a thousand hit points, which is pretty good. That is a lot for the zombies to get through. And it sounds like we have a visitor. I'm just going to actually bust out this wall real quick and deal with them like that. Hi. Thanks for stopping by. Ooh, that one looked painful. <laughs> Get up. Come on. I got things to do. I can't be playing with you all day, lady. And I took the liberty of crafting us a nice little potted plant. Because every home needs a Japanese peace lily. Alright, let's throw a little bit more wood in this fire. Get the rest of that iron 
smelt it down. Let's go ahead and throw our cooking grill in our cooking pot into our fire. And we can come up here, take our raw meat, take our water, and let's take eight, oops, eight of these chrysanthemum and our eggs and cook all of this goodness down into food. Let's make bacon and eggs as many as we can, as much grilled meat as we can, and as much red tea as we can. Excellent. And that's going to take about five minutes to cook, so let's throw a little bit more wood in the fire. Nice. All right, I think we have done an excellent job of reinforcing our base for the first day. I came over here. I don't think I'm going to quite... Nope, I'm not going to have enough time. I wanted to break that little electrical box to try and wake the zombies up inside. And uh, they would break out and then we could deal with them along with the horde all at once. But that's just fine. We'll get them after. And they should all come to the hatch. Because Cobblestone has 1,500 hit points and the hatch only has 1,000, technically speaking. Technically, they have to get through 3,000 HP, but as you can see right there, it has 1,000 HP. So this, to them, looks like the shortest path. So the zombies should always come to our hatch, and we can just kind of beat them in the head until they're dead. Not too bad, huh? Hey, we got our first loot bag. Come on, big money, big money. Ooh, we got some upgrades. Not bad. A little bit of blunderbuss ammo, a level 2 axe, and a level 3 shovel. I will take that. Let's bring these bad boys down, modify you, and let's repair all of our tools. Now, what I was trying to do before was to come over here and wrench on this here electrical box. And when it breaks... Nope. I thought it was going to wake the zombies up inside, but it didn't. That is okay. Uh, I think we're going to be looting this place tomorrow, maybe? Well, we do have a place to loot right over there. We'll see. Um, I think that's going to do it for today, though, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and we will be back soon with more 7 Days to Die. And uh, I'll see you guys then. Bye.